For many years, Russian propaganda called Ukrainians as Nazi or Neo-Nazi. Despite the extensive use of these terms, few Russians actually understand what they mean. If you look closely at meanings behind these words and compare it with Russian history, it turns out that Russians themselves qualify as Nazi. Here's why. Historical revisionism and propaganda. Editism is a common feature between Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy and Soviet Union. For example, Nazi Germany actively used the slogan One people, one state, one leader. If you look at the facts, Putin has built his country under the same principle. The German Nazi regime fed him pain of defeat in World War I. The German Nazi regime fed on the pain of a defeat in World War I. Hitler promised to restore justice, renew Germany's lost imperial might and return lands occupied by neighbor states. In a similar fashion, Putin's regime established itself in Russia traumatic experience of a collapse of the Soviet Union. It was seen as a defeat and humiliation by Russian people. Putin's aims are similar to Hitler's. To renew the lost greatness, get back territories with Russians, Russian speakers, or people loyal to Russia. Here, we see Putin's major mistake. He believed that the entire Ukraine was loyal to Russia, while in reality, due to war on Donbass and Crimea occupation, even the majority of Russian-speaking Ukrainians are hostile to Russia. Cult of Personality Hitler, Mussolini and Stalin were in power for a very long time. As a result, they lost a sense of boundaries and developed a strong feeling of being chosen by God, never making any mistakes and acting on some great historical mission. Streets, squares and other locations were named after dictators. Their portraits were everywhere. They were always in the focus of media attention. Even in the early years of Putin's presidency, people were talking about the emergence of his cult of personality. In 2001, BBC noted a wide variety of Putin's portraits in stores. In 2014, the Welt wrote that Putin's cult of personality began to intensify after the occupation of Crimea and became even stronger after the start of war in Donbass. The Welt also noted that the more isolated Russia becomes, the more Putin is celebrated. Putin president! Mira! There are songs, videos, and mass gathering to celebrate his persona. And this is just a small part of what is happening in Russia right now. Use of symbols. Russians use Latin letters Z and V not only to mark their equipment, but also as an official symbols of a bloody war in Ukraine, the one they cynically call a special operation. The letter Z presents the insignia of the first SS Polizei Panzer Grenadier Division. Their division was known for committing crimes against civilians. The V symbol was used in Nazi Germany as an old combatant insignia. It distinguished the oldest SS members. For example, Rex Führer says Heinrich Himmler, one of the biggest criminals of Nazi regime, wore one on its uniform. However, there are no official explanations from the Russian government on what these symbols actually mean. Graphically, the Z is more reminiscent of swastika than any Soviet symbol, such as five-pointed star, the hammer and sickle, or the red flag. It's interesting why the Russian Federation, which constantly emphasizes the concepts of Russian world and Slavs, uses Latin letters rather than Cyrillic symbols. This contradicts the mere ideology of Russian imperialism that is clearly anti-Western related to the ground and Slavophile. Genocide of other nations A prominent feature of totalitarian regimes is fighting an internal enemy to justify mass terror and genocide. Those who are hard to break or enslave are physically liquidated. This is done to get maximum support of a government, combined with absence of criticism of action to justify the aggression of the majority against the minority, to neutralize opposition and unite the society around a common goal. Nazi Germany had Aryan race superiority cult. Aryans were the clean-blooded Germans. They were considered Obermensch. Jewish were Untermensch and Rome's mixed people. Similarly, in Putin's Russia, there's a cult of superiority or greatness of Russian culture, language, history, army, economy, straight tradition above all others. They also promote a narrative of lowness, secondarity, provinciality and underdevelopment of other cultures, languages and traditions, Ukrainian among them. This narrative is dominant among the majority of Russian population since the Russian Empire and the USSR. The Holodomor 
the deportation of Crimean Tatars, the genocide of Russia's indigenous peoples are all evidence that a great country has always tried to destroy other nations. Ignoring international law Nazi Germany brutally ignored the norms of international law, bilateral and multilateral international treaties. Similarly, Putin's Russia having attacked Ukraine in 2014 and 2022 violated hundreds of international treaties and pretended that nothing wrong ever happened. Single Party System National Socialist Party was the only party allowed in Nazi Germany. Meanwhile, in Stalin's USSR, only the Communist Party was allowed. In Fascist Italy, only the National Fascist Party was allowed to operate since 1928. Putin's Russia has a de facto single party system. Since 2003, the Yedina Russia Party had a majority in the parliament. There are no influential opposition parties. All other parties are either allies of Yedina Russia or small and negligible, existing only for the purpose of a mock up democracy. Close alignment of state and church. During the Mussolini regime in Italy, a piety for the Catholic Church was propagated. In 1929, they signed Lateran agreements and created the Vatican city-state. The Pope P. XI supported aggressive expansionist policies of Mussolini. In Putin's Russia, Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchy is de facto the servant of a state. It supports the aggressive expansionist policy of Russia. Favoring traditional gender roles. In the fascist Italy, Nazi Germany, and Stalin's USSR, there was a cult of a family. A man was considered a breadwinner of a family, a patriot who works for the good of a state and protects the country in a time of war. A woman had to be above else a housewife, a mother, and some supplementary roles. In Putin's Russia, the 2020 Russian Constitution amendments include Article 114. It defines a family as a single socially oriented state policy in a field of preserving traditional family values. Marriage is defined as a union of a woman and a man. Besides, homosexuals are pursued in Russia and sometimes physically abused. Total control over media. The common feature of totalitarian regimes is the state's unlimited control over media. Every outlet, state-owned or private, works for the state's cause. The state isolates citizens from alternative information sources to control their agenda and from the worldview to keep them in line. We can see the same thing in Putin's Russia. Independent media are oppressed and destroyed, while social media being shut down are used for the benefit of propaganda. Abuse of enforcement services. In the Nazi Germany SS, the security services of the ruling party, and Gestapo, the secret police, had a complete control of the social life. Any opposition was ruthlessly suppressed. Relations were widespread. Investigations and court processes were implemented with multiple human rights violations, including humiliation of human dignity, psychological pressure, and physical torture. In Putin's Russia, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Federal Security Service also have a huge control over society. The protests are suppressed, participants are arrested and jailed. There are precedents of convictions for posts, reposts and even likes in social media. Recently, the deputy head of Russian Security Council and the head of Edina Russia Party, Mitty Medvedev, made a statement on the possibility to renew capital punishment in the country. As we see, the Putin's regime did not invent anything new. His new is in fact old but not forgotten by history. Nazism, Fascism, Stalinism and Russism are in fact the same things. The list of their common features can go on and on. We can also add militarization of society, the cult and invasionary war, an urge for quick, victorious wars. 